Give me 480 hertz, give me quad batteries, give me <laughs> USB-C. Sponsored by Skillshare. Is 120 still enough? Yeah, uh, 120 hertz is, is about where I'd want to be. I've played with 144 hertz displays. I think there's one that's at like 165 hertz, which is crazy. I know Apple has a patent on 240 hertz, but I was watching some of the high-end science videos where they were doing experiments showing how much we can actually discern refresh rate, and I'm all in on 480 now. I think they're, don't stop until you get us to 480. There will inevitably be a 240, and I think we'll start to think about diminishing returns for price when we get to that level. I wouldn't say no to it. Or battery drain. <laughs> yeah, or battery drain. I'm sure there's, there's a lot of consideration there. And give me a fingerprint reader back underneath the display, yeah. make it the whole bottom half of the phone. So I don't even have to land on that spot. You don't have to worry about putting it in the perfect spot for my hand size. Just make the whole bottom half one huge sensor. Boom, I'm logging in, not even thinking about it. My dream for the biometrics is still, don't even ask me for it anymore. Just take a glimpse of my face geometry. And anytime I touch the screen, check my fingerprint, check out how I walk. Have Siri make sure it's the same voice. Just use all of these patterns to make a trust threshold so that if you're like 98% sure it's me, don't even ask me to authenticate. Only do that when your sort of trust level drops too low. Yeah, maybe it would be cool for, maybe there's like something I could wear on my wrist that would like always be attached to me and then the phone would just know that that thing is mine. And maybe it could also tell the time. <laughs> that would be like a really nice consistent way with today's tech to authenticate every time. Yeah, so it, it pretty much knows who we are. It stopped making me work for a living. Exactly. So in terms of like HDR and color quality and clarity and all those sorts of things, are we there yet? Or are there still like, where places you'd like to see it go? If I could take anything, I would take something like an S21 Ultra brightness level, but of course, beautifully calibrated. The, the natural colors from the iPhone look great. But just like having a screen that's so bright that you put it like in the dash of your car in direct sunlight and you can still read everything is a, is a dream. What about things like the selfie camera? We've seen people do pop-ups, notches, cutouts. I would love the under display uh, once they get that. Right now, the pixel stretching and the AI to make it look like a normal photo a lot. isn't really there yet. But if they could optimize that. Until then, though, I, I think I would actually go hole punch now. I didn't hate the, the pop-up camera thing. Like, it obviously is a moving part, and it's obviously going to hurt your water resistance. When you think about the privacy implications of having it covered when it's not in use, I was I was cool with that. And I don't take enough selfies that I would really care a lot about the best, most incredible selfie camera available all the time. But if we're going like future tech, because it's assuming it's going to get better over time, I think behind the glass is ideally where I want it to end up. So it can it can still do all the same good stuff, still take a great quality selfie, and I just never have to see it. So flipping it around and looking at the camera now, uh, Apple's always had pretty good cameras. If you were gonna improve something there, I'm guessing two megapixel macro and two megapixel black and white probably aren't on the table. That would be a great guess. So in my dream world, Apple gets these huge sensors, huge ultra wide, huge main camera, and even a really good big telephoto. I'd be really interested if they could pull off a dual aperture mode like we saw in Samsung oh, yeah. phones from a couple years ago, where in bright lighting or a close up subject, you can still get more in focus when there's enough lighting. You look at Huawei and you look at Samsung and some of the other companies with these giant, I think, was it 108 megapixel and they pixel bin them down. Like, operate on the pixel bin version if you have to for just for speed, for getting that zero shutter and getting that really high speed uh, HD, you know, smart HDR and those other things. But then let us have all of those megapixels if we want to. Yeah, yeah, give us, give us the flexibility. How do you feel about the uh, Periscope zooms? Because I, I feel like I really want one. I feel like that, that zoom is the biggest thing missing from Apple covering all the camera bases still. I would love to see it. I'd love to see a Periscope zoom in the iPhone. Yeah, I know most people are still pointing and shooting and I get that. Optimize for that, that's me too. I mostly point and shoot. Just give me that option. Just give me the control. Give me a little pro mode once in a while, you know? Just the ability to tap a switch and get all the pro controls exposed. I think that would go along with Apple's pro branding. Like make it a pro exclusive if you have to, but give us those controls. Also, it's kind of Apple's thing to like do it themselves when they want it done best. So give me that pro mode that I know you know how to do so well. And why not make a camera tether to the iPhone while you're at it? But maybe that's asking too much. One of the other big things that are making headlines these days is the parallel battery so that you can charge them at the same time, effectively doubling the speed you can fill up your phone. Yeah, this is a huge, a huge thing. Just that type of thinking is, is right along the lines of typical Apple thinking of like, we wanna make this easier to use. So 
yeah, give me those, give me those batteries in parallel, right? It doesn't have to be the biggest battery ever, but that enables that convenience factor of like, don't even think about when your battery is low. As long as you got that charger, five minutes plugged in and you're set for the rest of the day. Yeah, everyone kept saying, just double the size of the battery, no one's gonna care. And then the 12 Pro Max came out and all of a sudden, everyone's like, this phone is too heavy. I'm switching to the mini. So I like this, I like the parallel charging idea much better. Like make the battery as big as is humanly comfortable, but then do like multi-parallel charging if you have to. Yeah, I'm almost curious who's gonna do, since we were talking about quadrupling the refresh rate, who's gonna do the first like quad battery system where it's just four coils and they're all just crushing at the same time and like 120 watt equivalent or something. Why not Apple? Why not? It was weird to me that one of the rumors was that the portless iPhone would be like a, a one-off, a high-end version. I always thought, you know, for consumers, it can go portless. You know, I don't think they, they would care if you made them buy new cables, but if they just were using their existing wireless chargers, I think that's fine. But the minute you have Pro on the label, it should be like MacBook Pro, iPad Pro, those have USB-C. So iPhone Pro should also have USB-C because that's a Pro feature. Yeah, I think Lightning's fine. No, just kidding. No, no, my, my <laughs> dream iPhone, my dream iPhone is definitely not a Lightning port. Um, no, it, I again, I have got a USB-C charger pretty much everywhere I'm at. So keyword universal, if I could get that USB-C to get those charging speeds and to do all that data transfer stuff, I would love that. It is definitely a dream of the iPhone because I'm pretty sure we're never going to see that happen. But since we're, since we're just making whatever phone we want, give me 480 Hertz, give me quad batteries, give me <laughs> USB-C. Uh, yeah, John Turnus' new job suddenly got a lot harder. Yeah, even if we look straight across the aisle at the iPad Pro, I'm like, you did 120 hertz in USB-C and you got all of our hopes yeah. up. So that's that's definitely something I would like to see. Uh, treat all your pro children the same. Like, just love them all equally. Yeah. So if, so if we get this phone, if Apple just knocks it out the park with the iPhone 13, mm -hmm. and there are a bunch of YouTubers out there who want to know how to review it, the way only MKBHD would review it. Is there any place they could go to learn? As a matter of fact, there is now. <laughs> they could go to Skillshare, uh, as I conveniently have recently dropped uh, my Skillshare course on how I make videos, which by the way was a crazy experience just because I have taken so many classes in how to do things by experts and I never really realized how much information, I mean, you know this, but when you, when you make YouTube videos and you're in this world, you pick up all your own tricks and tips for yourself and you're self-taught in that way. And uh, it was really it was really fulfilling to like put that back out into the world of like all these things that I've learned and little tips and tricks. It's a very general how I make videos course, but I imagine I'll be doing some more uh, specific versions in the future. But it was, a, it was a fun one, so that's why I'd point them. And what I love about it is your Skillshare video is in and of itself an MKVHD video. Oh, it had to be. It had to be shot the same way. The only difference is it's shot at 24 FPS, but you know what, I'll let, I'll let that slide. I'll let that slide. And in the off chance that video just isn't your thing, Skillshare also has complete classes on illustration, design, photography, freelancing, and more. With an annual subscription that's less than $10 a month, real projects to create, and the support of real fellow creatives. More than 7 million of us learning with Skillshare. Plus, the first 1,000 of you who click the link in the description get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Totally free. So act now and start learning today. And clicking on that link really helps out this channel. And we put the charger back in the box. I think like that that's like a no-brainer. Oh, true. Yeah. Yes. While we're dreaming. Yeah. Apple goes, you know what we did wrong last year? We're going to fix that this year and put the charger in the box. And then every other company goes, yeah, us too. And then it's a kumbaya moment for the whole industry.